Anyang Kasil, Iwena Hala Bajiyayo. Well, when I returned to the United States, I, it was on last Monday, and before I returned, uh, Ari Rang TV asked me for an interview. So that just got shown on TV yesterday, and it's kind of funny for me to, you know, react to my own interview. But I thought those who don't have access to Ari Rang TV might be interested in my interview. Um, so I'm going to present it and I'm going to take myself off the screen completely and I'll just have a few closing words after. It was really an amazing experience for me because I've never been on TV. Uh, <clears throat> I've never sat in a makeup chair, you know, putting makeup on, fixing my hair. Um, I mean, they even went over and fixed the buttons on my shirt before I, I uh, broadcast. Uh, so it was all a brand new experience for me. And uh, like everything else this past week in my Korean trip, it's everything's uh, first time and everything was really fun. And uh, who knew that I could be interviewed and uh, <laughs> that I could be interviewed, that I wouldn't freeze up, that I wouldn't get camera shy. I certainly had no idea until I started this channel. I had no idea I could sit in front of a camera, but you know, here I'm all by myself. Okay, well, I'm just going to show you the interview. It lasts about 20 minutes. I'll come back, say a few closing words, and that'll be it. Okay? Culture and tourism officials here recently hosted a program that invited 49 fans of all things Korean to the country for a first-hand experience of the local culture. On Issues and Insiders today, we speak with one of these fans. Welcome to yet another edition of Issues and Insiders. I'm Min Sun Hee. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with a senior fan of Korean culture who also runs a YouTube channel to share his enthusiasm for K-dramas, and K-Music. I have Zev Ratit here in the studio. Zev, it's a pleasure to have you with us. It's a real pleasure for me. Right, Zev, let's begin then with <laughs> details about your trip here to South Korea, which I understand is your first trip. It is my first trip and it's incredibly exciting to me. So what brought you here? <clears throat> what brought me here was uh, Korea Invites You. And I have to say, I know that there were <clears throat> uh, 77,000 invitees and for 185 countries and there was only so many selected, but the truth was, I just got a, uh, I, on my YouTube channel, I got a, a message from Korean tourism, tourism Organization asking if they were to send me to Korea on, for an event in May, would I be willing to go? And they said, can you give us your contact information? <clears throat> so I gave them my contact information, and um, uh, I had no idea what they were talking about, but boy, the idea of coming to Korea was really exciting. You know, I've been following Korean dramas and Korean culture for, since 2017. I couldn't, I'd only been running my channel for a couple of weeks, and I got this, these, this request. I didn't even know if it was real. Okay, so <clears throat> I said yes, and we, we then engaged in a series of conversations about it, and I kept telling them this was fine, that was fine, dates were fine, and uh, I still didn't know what the event was. Okay, it was only a couple of weeks before I came that I finally said, could you tell me, is there, can you more details about what I'm doing? Why am I going? And then I found out it was Korea Invites You, and I had no idea how big it was and what was going on. I was stunned. It was like, oh my gosh, this is real. I mean, I'm real. One that, out of uh, 77,000 people who were, who applied, and you're one out of 49 to be invited. Correct. And I didn't apply. I mean, I just was invited, and I was amazed, and I couldn't believe I. I'm going to Korea. I, and I think I didn't really believe it until they sent me my plane ticket and realized I'm going to Korea. And this is because you have a YouTube channel that, that right. you began earlier this year, I believe. I started my YouTube channel February 1st. After <clears throat> watching over 250 Korean dramas, am yeah, I right? That's my estimate. It could be more. It's, it, it's got to be more because my, my wife and I have watched 110 together. And I always watch them before I show them to her. And I know that my wife doesn't look like certain genres. So I've watched at least two, at least twice as many, probably three times as many dramas as I've shown my wife. And this all started in the year 2017. That's correct. Right now, upon arriving here in South Korea with the program Korea Invites You by culture and tourism officials here in the country, you arrived at 4.30 in the morning, Zev. And yes. then you told a local media that you were unwilling to miss a minute of experience <laughs> the culture here. So you <clears throat> refused to rest in your room and you came out to Absolutely. start. Could you tell us a bit about the programs within the Korea Invites You campaign initiative? Uh, well, when, when we arrived, they were going doing a bus tour around the city. 
okay? So uh, I, they told me it was a bus tour around the city, and I just thought to myself, you know, uh, they keep thinking I'm old. They keep calling me an elderly, you know, and I've never thought of myself as elderly, and I'm certainly not gonna miss something because somebody thinks I'm old. I'm in really great health, I'm in good condition. Uh, there was no way I was, gonna, I was going to go to my room and go to sleep when, when we're doing something. In the process, I had the opportunity to meet some wonderful people from all around the world. I have to say one of the best parts of this whole thing were all the people I met who also are enthusiastic about Korea. It was, that was really great. Um, if you're asking about what the places that I really enjoyed going, well, the top of this, you know, um, Gyeongbokgung. You know, my, I've watched, I've watched so many dramas, you know, and I've been seen the palaces, and I've really wanted to come and see them in person. And I love Korean architecture. I love traditional Korean architecture. Um, and they put me in a hanbok, and it never occurred to me, never occurred to me I'd be wearing a hanbok around it. At first, I thought that would be kind of silly to walk around a hanbok. But no, it was great. It yeah, was great, and all, and all the, and everybody. I couldn't believe how many people were in handbooks all, all around me. And uh, I have to tell you that I think there's there's there are very few traditional costumes that look more, look more beautiful on a woman than a handbook. I think it's beautiful. It's it's feminine. I I think it's dazzlingly beautiful. Now it may have been affected by watching Kim Tae Ri and. Uh, in her handbook. And this <laughs> and, uh, is in the drama, Mr. Sunshine. In the Sunshine, drama, Mr. Sunshine. Which was your first drama. Which was my first drama. Right. <laughs> Zeb, if you were asked to make a few suggestions to make this program, the Korea Invites You program, even better, <clears throat> what would you suggest? You know, that'd be really, really difficult because, in fact, there's so, there's so much to see in Korea uh, that they, they broke us into groups and certain groups went to certain places and they did, they did ask us in advance the kinds of things we're interested in looking at or seeing. And I don't know how they could have done a better job of, uh, of selecting. Somebody's got to make the selection. So maybe K-pop dancing really wasn't my thing, but it was still fun to be there. Okay. You went to K-pop dancing? Oh, yeah, you can see me doing my... I wasn't very good None at of it. You I'm, I'm terrible at it, trust me. <clears throat> totally, totally uncoordinated. But, uh, but sure, that was part of the program. But, you know, you, ha you have to select. And I think that they did a good job of selecting. And I have to say that the staff involved in, in uh, uh, Korean Vitsi was, they were wonderful, just wonderful. They were kind, they were friendly, they were helpful, they were just, just great. I would just, well, I, these are the kind of people I would just sit and have a drink with in a bar, all of them. Right. They're wonderful people, including the group I was in. But the people who actually ran the program, fabulous. Zev, your YouTube channel, it's called Zev <coughs> Does K Drama. Yes. It started in February this year, and you share reviews about Korean entertainment, including its dramas and music. Now, before we touch upon the music part, could you tell us a bit more about the dramas that you choose to introduce on your YouTube channel? Okay. Well, the way I choose my dramas for the YouTube, first of all, I have a list of, I have put up a list of my 10 favorite Korean dramas, and it's very hard to select 10 because I love probably, uh, probably 100 of them I really love, okay? So, but in fact, when I tried to create 10, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't reduce it beyond 17. I realized the day after I made it that we really couldn't reduce it beyond 18 because there are so many good ones. But I tend to like dramas that, uh, I like dramas with a romance in them. I like dramas that, um, um, that I want, when I finish watching a drama, I want to feel good about life. And there are so many Korean dramas that are like this. But the ones I choose for, <clears throat> to present, I try to find, uh, a song, and the OSTs for, on Korean dramas are extraordinary. I think those are the best of any dramas anywhere, the, the music there. And what I'd look for is a song that I really love from a drama that I really loved, and I look for a, a music video which is scenes from the drama where I can listen to the music with it and react to it to, with, the, uh, with my audience, uh, because maybe if they see those beautiful scenes, they listen to that beautiful song, a drama they never thought they'd want to go check out, they will. And I do get people come back and say, I never thought of watching that drama, but I did watch it. What's your next recommendation? <clears throat> so it does affect people. I hope so. Zeb, what ultimately led to your decision to venture onto social media, a social media platform to share your interest in Korean entertainment with I have a very close you. friend, uh, I'll even name his name, Bobby Sandler, <clears throat> okay. who came one day and said, you know, you've been talking about this so much and for so long, you should have a YouTube channel. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know if I'd ever do anything about it, but I figured, okay, maybe I will someday. So we and have he, Mr. Bobby Sandler Mr. to thank Mr. Bobby Sandler, this. yes. I see. And he came over one day in the middle of nowhere, took out his phone, and said, it started interviewing me about Korean dramas, about IU. All kind, you'll see some of these where I say why I like IU. I, I'll show people all the, the uh, uh, IU's pictures in my house, and there are a lot of them, okay? And, uh, and he did this quizzing, and he... Um, um, 
And he said, okay, now you get enough material. So I did, I broke into pieces and I began the, the channel. And three weeks later, uh, you found me. Right, But it she came did. out of nowhere. If he hadn't come over and pushed this on me, Right. Uh, I didn't really know what to do. I, 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 I got a webcam, an inexpensive webcam, got an inexpensive headset. At first, I didn't even have a headset. I just had the microphone to use when I programmed. Right. Okay, and started that way. And Zev, before we go to talking about IU, I just want to ask you, you spoke with the local media here, and you claim that uh, you found expression in uh, Korean dramas and their uh, point of view on life rather refreshing. Do you care to explain? Yes. I... Uh, I, I personally have a folk, I believe that uh, the Western world has been overcome with cynicism. Uh, uh, everything, everything's questioned. No, there's no, no acts of kindness or nothing anybody does except for their own self-interest. They do it for money and sex. I mean, but it's always their own self-interest. I think it's very cynical. Um, and one thing I found in Korean dramas is, uh, the, all the ones I watch, and there's vast numbers of them, there's a fundamental belief in the goodness of people. People do act on kindness and goodness. Um, it's not cynical. It's the least cynical thing I can watch as a Korean drama. And that, that's really very important to me. And staying with that, Zev, in recent years, K Entertainment has been garnering quite a bit of global interest. How do you explain that? I think I'm not, I think I'm not alone. <clears throat> I think people are tired of uh, negative views of the world. I think people are tired of identity politics. I think people just want to have a good story that when they're finished, you feel good about life. I, I, I know there's love, okay? I know that there's hope in this world, and I, and I know there are good people. And I think you get that from Korean dramas. You get a lot of that in Korean dramas. Yeah, and I find that very refreshing. There is a trend with more recent Korean dramas that try to cater to a Western audience that I think have, have uh, gone the other way. But <clears throat> by and large, in the bulk of the dramas that are really wonderful are the, are the most numerous. Right. And there's so many. I've watched almost 300, as you know. Right, as you, as you said earlier. Zev, moving from K-dramas now to K-music, as you mentioned, you spoke about IU earlier on. You've been extended a personal invite by IU herself to her concert to take place in the U.S. Do fill us in on the details that led to that invitation from IU. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, as I said, I started my YouTube channel on, on February 1st. And about three weeks in, uh, IU had... Um, was re she released the um, first official music video from her new concert tour, from her new album, okay? It was Shopper. And I decided for the first official release, I would make a special program. Not that my programs are special, really, but I put on my tuxedo vest, which is a yellow tuxedo vest I bought for my daughter's wedding, okay? I have a pin from Hotel de Luna that I wore on it. I wore my red bow tie and a tuxedo shirt, and I celebrated the release of her first album her first song from her new album. <clears throat> and I went to sleep that night with my usual, like, you know, 20 subscribers. I mean, nobody's watching my channel. And, uh, you know, I've, I've, I don't know, a few thousand views. Most, I'm sure they're all people who are my friends. Uh, and uh, I wake up the next morning, I go down to my computer, and suddenly I look, I look to see how many views I've got. And it's like, I've got like 200,000 views, and I've got uh, t thousands of subscribers. I'm like, what is going on? And all these comps are saying, she invited you, she invited you. She, go to Instagram, she's invited you. And I, I go to the, to, I, I, I get to, uh, they, somebody provides a link, I go to Instagram, and there she is with this picture of me in my outfit, okay, saying, you've made me very happy, okay? Let me make you very happy. I'd like you to invite you to my concert. My staff will get in touch with you. And I, uh, if you see, if you look at my site, that morning when all that happened, my I, first thing I did was six in the morning, or even before, I called my friend Bobby, and he runs Mr. over Sandler. with a, Bobby Sandler, and he runs over with his camera, okay, and he and he starts filming my reaction, okay, and I and my wife wakes up from all the noise and she comes down and she looks she looks up, oh what's going on? And she says, he's been invited to the concert, and she goes, ah that's fake, and then uh, then Bobby says, no no it's not fake it's real, and she looks at me and she goes, you're not that great you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you are going to the but, concert. But I am going to the concert. It was real, okay. Right. And but uh, I was gasping for breath, excited, and uh, quite frankly, every time I think about it, I'm still like, kind of pinch myself. I hard to believe any of this is happening. It's hard to believe. It must I'm seem just, surreal. I live a very quiet life as a programmer. <laughs> I used to anyway. Right. <laughs> Zeb, what do you suppose are perhaps I use merits as a musician, and of course also as an actress? Well. I, I think she's one of a kind when it comes to music. I think she's a brilliant writer. She writes be beautiful lyrics. She composes beautiful music. She has the, the most wonderful voice I've ever heard. I think that's fantastic. 
Um, as an actress, she's one of the best actresses I've seen. I was totally mesmerized. I discovered her because of her acting. You know, I, I saw her in Hotel de Luna. I was totally mesmerized by her. Okay, and from Hotel de Luna, I decided I wanted to see more things she did. At that time, I didn't know she was a singer. Okay, and from you looking, thought she was at, just an actress. I thought she was an actress, and so I started looking at other things. I saw her in Dream High, and even though there's a little singing there, it's like a story about a singing school. So I didn't take anything of it, and then I saw her in. Uh, you're the best, Yi Sun Shin. And then she got to episode 35 and she sang Forgotten Season. And I went, oh my God. Is that she when is, you realized she was a singer? I went, oh my God, she must be a singer because this is unbelievable. It was so beautiful. And then I started looking, I started going on YouTube and looking for her and I discovered she's not just a singer, she's one of the greatest, most famous singers in Korea. And I, that, from that point on, I was addicted to her music. But you know, beyond her skills as an actress, and as a singer, uh, she's just a wonderful person. And somebody who gets that successful is rarely somebody who uh, can be remain that humble and that decent to people. I'm impressed the way she treats the people who work for her. I'm impressed with her contributions to charity. I'm impressed by uh, her background story and how hard she's worked, how she worked her way through difficulty, how she was able to go through 20 failures, you know, and never gave up. I grew up really respecting uh, people who work hard. Right. And, I, I, and I've said this a few times, I, IU embodies the, all the qualities that I respect most in people. And I've said before, I'm 76, she's 31, but I, in many ways, look up to IU. I think she's, I think she's a model of what we all could be as people if we work hard, and I mean, not everybody's that talent, but she can be that kind of person, okay? But I, I think if, if she wasn't such a magnificent human being, uh, I'd appreciate her talent, but I wouldn't be as completely involved with her as I am. Right, and this is something that many of her fans think of as and well. And they're right. Right, We're they right. are. I'm, I'm a Yuana now, you know. <laughs> right. That's why you call yourself Grandpa Yuana. Yeah, I called myself Grandpa, and that came out of my first uh, videos. I was showing uh, I, uh, Bobby my pictures of IU, which are all over the place downstairs, and I got to the landing. I have a three-floor floor house, and so I got to the landing coming up to the first floor, because I was from the zero floor, and I said, okay, well, this is it. There were no picture pictures upstairs, and my wife says, no pictures of IU above this floor. And I said, okay. Okay, uh, and then I, I said, well, I think it's because my wife's afraid that I'm going to run away with IU. <laughs> no. And I said, and I turned to the camera, obviously being funny, said, IU, I'm sorry. I'm happily married, and you'll, all, you'll, you'll always just be a granddaughter to me. Right. And when I called her a granddaughter in that video, people started calling me grandpa. <laughs> and, and, and that's why you call Grandpa you and Anna, Grandpa right? Grandpa Uana, because uh, the, the Uana family, which stands for you, love me, uh, the Uana, which is the fan club, um, I, I did officially join it, but right away, just uh, the way the responses I'm getting to my channel are so kind, affectionate, loving, and it's, I know it's the Uana community mostly. And uh, I feel, what, I, I, I want to be part of the community, and I've been, I feel adopted. Right. And I actually officially joined the seventh generation. Yuena. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> and, and, and speaking as Grandpa Yuena, Zev, you are an active senior member of Hallyu, if I may say so myself. What is your secret to perhaps staying healthy and very positive? Well, I've always been the kind of person uh, who, uh, I don't know, I've always, I, I, I tend to look at the positive things in life. I never, I'm the kind of person who doesn't look and say, gee, if only I'd done something differently. No. One of the lessons I had early in life was listening to my, my family, or my older members of the family say to themselves, oh, if only I'd done this or only done that. And I go, I will never in my life ever look back and say, if only I'd done this. I make the best decision I know how to make now, and I can only move forward. I've always said, I can't change the past, I can only change the future. And I always made the best decisions I knew how. And maybe they didn't always work out, but I, I, I have no regrets. I've always done what I and I've always done what I wanted to do. I've always believed I could do anything. I mean, I, I was a, I have a career that went from being a newspaper reporter to a social worker to the uh, uh, an instructional designer to a, a, the president of a software company to a VP in a hardware company. At 40 years old, I decided that the programmers that worked for me had the best job ever. So I bought a 600-page book on programming in C, taught myself, and started programming at 40. And I and I programmed till I retired 31, out of my home where I could be there when my son grew up. That is a remarkable story, Zev, your story itself. Yeah. And, and I do have uh, really good genes. My family is very healthy. My, the, the average age of people to pass in my family is in the mid-90s. And I've had a few that passed 100. So I, I think I have good, strong genes. 
Right, a, a very healthy, a very positive psychological uh, mindset and of course great genes like you said. Zev, what are some of your plans for the rest of this year? For the rest of this year, um, well, as soon as I get back, I go back on my channel work, which I love. And then I will, uh, there's the concert in July. Uh, I can't wait for them to get back. I use concerts. I, I want to get my. I want them to get back to me soon and say, you know, here's where your here's where your tickets are, etc. But I have to be patient. Um, then my my uh, my wife is French, and I met her in France. Uh, her mother's turning 90 in September, so we're going to go to France in September. And while we're in France, I've never been to Northern Europe, so we'll do a little trip up to either Denmark or Norway, maybe both. Um, then, of course, the next big plan is coming to Korea. My wife and I are planning a nice long trip to Korea in the spring. I, I want to I be here for the cherry blossoms. So you'll be here in spring then? Yeah, in I'm coming back. You're coming back to Korea. And my wife would like to, to go to Seoul, Busan, and Jeju. Spring so, of next year, of course. Yeah, right? spring 20, 2025. Finally, to getting to do what we planned since the pandemic hit. Right. We've been planning it since the pandemic. And so we keep getting delayed. But finally, nothing can get in our way. We're, we're definitely coming. And I want to get as long a trip as I'd like to spend a month in Korea if I can. So right. I have enough time to be places. And in the meantime, we'll get to see you on your YouTube channel. Then. Oh, yeah. Right. Because I mean, that's a pleasure. I do, that, I do that for love, really. Right. Thank you, though. Right. So I believe that's all the time we have for this edition. Thank you so much for making the time to be here live. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. This is a wonderful new experience for me. Everything that since the day this began has been a wonderful new experience, and thank you very much. All right, and Mr. Bob Sandler, if you're watching us, thank you for getting Zev to start <laughs> YouTube. All right, Zev, thank you so much. Right, well, that ends this edition of Issues and Insiders. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend. Well... <clears throat> I, I hope you enjoyed it. I, I sure I enjoyed doing it. It was an incredible amount of fun. The interviewer was really skilled and she was she really she made me relax before we started. Um, it was uh, really uh, an amazing opportunity. Uh, I also had a radio interview the Friday before, but wow, I was interviewed so many times last week. Anyhow, uh, I just thought maybe some of you would be interested. If not, you know, just ignore this posting. <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll have other things later, but I thought this would be interesting. I found it on my, uh, I, I found it on my, on my computer. First thing this morning, I think I, I woke up at four in the morning and just happened to look and wow, there it was. Okay. Uh, that's it. Calcate.